And so, and Eric, there's another question here for you, uh, well, for us, but um, I'll ask you, if you're on a biologic, so if you're immunocompromised um, and a vaccine becomes available for COVID-19, will there be an issue with receiving the vaccine? So there's a lot of questions there, right? So I, I'm actually helping to lead uh, with Dr. Jennifer Jones um, and the Canadian Association of Gastroenterology vaccination guidelines for patients with IBD, which hopefully should be published within the next few months. Um, and we've actually split those guidelines into two papers, one about live vaccines and one about inactivated vaccines. So live vaccines, live attenuated vaccines are vaccines that contain very small amounts of live virus particles whereas the inactive vaccines do not contain any live virus particles. And so, you know, the question will be when the COVID-19 virus vaccine is out, will it be a live vaccine or will it be an inactive uh, non-live vaccine? You know, I think that that we, we still don't know that yet, right? I mean, there's both, both types of vaccines are in trials now at various stages of trials. We don't know what type is going to work. Uh, certainly the flu vaccine is not a live vaccine, the, the injected flu vaccine, but the nasal spray flu vaccine is a live vaccine. Um, so there may be both types available, and it may well be that if you're on one of the immune suppressing medicines, they are going to recommend against doing a live vaccine. But if there's a not live vaccine, an inactive vaccine, then um, it should be safe. We just don't know. The next question will be, you know, they're not going to make uh, vaccines available. It's not going to be available for the whole world all at once, right? They're going to have to ramp out production. So the question will be who gets the vaccine first? And that's a discussion for health policymakers and politicians, public health and bioethicists, right? It's an ethical issue. Um, you know, how, where on the list will people with IBD be if they're immunosuppressed, like on uh, Eustachinumab or Stelera? We don't know the answer to that question. But the hope is that whatever vaccine that they come out with, uh, you can take because it won't be a live vaccine. We just don't know that yet. And the one thing I, I would add too, if you remember those graphs I showed you about this kind of playing out for a few years, um, that's in the context of, of waiting for either a vaccine, which shorten that of course. Um, but if not, then it's a, a matter of what we're trying to do is ob obtain what's called herd immunity. And, and you've probably heard that in, in the news quite often. And essentially what it means is, there's enough people who are exposed to the virus who mount an antibody, and that antibody protects them from being reinfected. So every one of those things we don't know yet with the, with this um, virus. Um, we're assuming that if you get if you get infected, that you will mount antibodies. And there's a lot of data now to show that people are mounting. The next question that has to be answered is if you have those antibodies, does it prevent you from being reinfected? Um, we think that's going to be the case. Um, and if those if those answers are yes, then eventually what's going to happen is there are going to be people who are going to have natural immunity because they've had the disease. And there are people who don't have immunity and they'll be susceptible to getting infected. And the whole idea of, of kind of diminishing this disease is that epidemiologically, if 60 to 70 percent of the population um, has exposure, has antibodies, um, then they essentially create kind of a shield against the people who are susceptible. It's much harder for somebody who gets infected to pass on that because they're, they're coming in contact with people who are immune so they don't get them sick, so they don't pass on that disease on and onwards. And so um, this will be, it, regardless of what happens with the vaccine, even let's say there's a live vaccine and we, and we turn around and say, you know what, it's we shouldn't be using it in people who are highly immunocompromised or for whatever reasons. The fact that we'll have a vaccine and we'll start to immunize segments of the population, including that other segments will have already have been exposed and recovered, means we'll get to a point where we'll start to immunize a vast swath of the population and they start to form a shield against more vulnerable people who may not mount an immune response if they get a vaccine or who um, are, it's not safe to give them a vaccine, for example, if it's a live one. 